All right, everyone, today's video is going to be interesting. I've done collection videos in the past showing you guys my physical game collection. Uh, in fact, it actually might be due time for a collection update. I've gotten a lot more games uh, for, I was really focusing mostly on the sixth generation of systems. That's my main focus right now in terms of game pickups. But I've also gotten some new pickups for the seventh and eighth generation systems as well. So let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see a sort of uh, collection update, so to speak. Um, you know, I'd be happy to actually get that out for you guys because there are some new games I didn't have a chance to show you guys in those initial videos I did only a couple years ago. But in any case, today's video is going to be different. I'm not going to be showing you guys physical games. In fact, I've been spending a lot of time on console dashboards. And I've been looking at how I can best sort of organize the games that I have installed on my drive and, uh, you know, how I can kind of leverage the folders and group systems to best fit my particular play style. Now, you guys know me. I like to play one game at a time and I play those games in sequential order. So I don't typically, you know, like to jump around between different genres. I like to, you know, just hone in and focus on one particular experience, play it through to completion and then uh, move on to the next game. And I've been doing that for the past several years or so. So uh, folders and groups and all these different things, like I know a lot of people like to do a completed folder and a not completed folder. It doesn't really apply to me that much because I just, you know, move on to one game from the next and I play those games through to completion and I don't jump around between different experiences. So I'm very structured in that respect, but I was looking at these folders and groups and thinking to myself, how can I best leverage um, you know, the organization tools that we have here on these console dashboards to fit you know, what I specifically like to play games. Um, and what I've kind of come across is uh, doing this cool, interesting thing with groups on Xbox and this interesting thing with folders and, and game lists really on PlayStation 5. So um, I want to do a video here to kind of show you guys how I organize these uh, games on my console dashboard. Um, so that's what this video is going to be about. In a way, this is going to be a bit of a, uh, I guess, a showcase of future collection videos. As everyone's increasingly buying more digital, I feel that you know you're gonna you're gonna still have the physical guys showing off their huge game collections, but the average consumer, I imagine, like you know, especially young people, are gonna be like, hey, here's my game collection, scrolling through a bunch of tiles on a home screen, which is it's sad, but you know that's the reality that we live in. So anyway, this is gonna be my version, sort of, of that video, but done in a different way. So I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, let's get on with it. All right, everyone, we're gonna start here with the Xbox Series X dashboard. I like the way that Microsoft kind of organizes their tiles. And as you're gonna see here, what I've done is I've utilized the group section on the My Games and Apps page to basically organize all of my games in release date order. So let's scroll up here and go to My Games and Apps, click on that. And if we go down to Groups, you're gonna see here how I've kind of organized this. And what I've done here uh, is kind of, I had to sort of audit the games within my 360 and original Xbox catalog, which ones were backwards compatible, which ones were backwards compatible only if you have the disc, you know, meaning that they're not on the Microsoft Store anymore. So I've sort of done it um, this way. So you're gonna see here, which really, what I really like about this method is that you kind of see the generations start and end and sort of their progress with the game releases here. So I have, you know, here we are with 2024 here, the current games. Um, I don't own these, but uh, I'm going to show you a neat trick you can do if you, in case you want to kind of replicate this on your own console. So um, these are the games I am planning to get for the uh, the Xbox though, um, when I do get to them. But you're going to see here, we start with 2024, go down to 2023. Here's all the games I have organized, 2022, 21. It's pretty awesome. Here's the 2020. We have the start of the uh, Xbox Series X, you know, Gen 9 uh, console release. So we start with those games, and then we have the end also of the Xbox One era, right? Uh, the eighth generation here with these last couple games I got in 2019. Here's all the games. 2018. It's just kind of cool, you know. Um, <laughs> in a way, this is sort of a, a almost a future look at what, um, you know, upcoming game collection videos are going to be. It's just, it's funny to me, you know, as, as increasingly more people purchase dig digital and all that stuff, 
I have a feeling that people are going to be like, oh, here's my game collection, and you're going to be seeing them scroll through tiles just like this on a screen. So um, <laughs> it's a bit interesting in that respect. But yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting because it, it shows basically a timeline, right? So basically, we, as you can see here, there's a lot more games that started getting for the Xbox One towards the end of the console life cycle. And that's because the Xbox One X came out here in 2017. And you can see prior to that, I didn't really play much on my original Xbox One because, well, quite frankly, most games uh, that were multi-platform releases performed a lot better on the PS4, and so I would just get those games. So that's how you, it's kind of interesting because you see sort of the, here's the start of basically the Xbox One, right? It's first release here with Rise, Forza 5, and all that stuff. And then you see me kind of, you know, picking up a couple games here and there. Then we get to the Xbox One X release, and then I start getting most of my games on that system. And, you know, it just kind of goes there until the end of the generation and it kind of restarts and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool here. Um, let's go down. Here's 2013. So this was the end of the 360 life cycle. And uh, keep in mind, you know, I have a lot more games on the Xbox 360. I am contemplating sort of doing another game collection update video, but uh, I'm still not sure if I want to do that yet. Um, there were a couple more games I got here and there for the, three, for the 360 that I didn't actually uh, show in my, my you know, latest collection video for that system. But yeah, you know, you can kind of just take a look here. Um, pretty much all of these games I have on disc. You can see a couple of digital downloads, like From Dust, you know, that's a digital download. I think I did a playthrough of that game on YouTube, actually. You can still check that out. 2010, great year for games. All these awesome titles. And, uh, you know, while the Xbox backwards compatibility program is awesome, um, you know, I just, it, there's so many other games that are just not available on the program, and uh, that's why it's so useful to still have an Xbox 360 to play some of those games. You know, 2008 here, all these awesome, awesome games, and a lot of these are also enhanced for the system as well, you know, so you can, like, click on any of them. Um, why don't we click on... Uh, Duke Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2, you click on start, then you go to manage game and add-ons, and then you go over to compatibility options, you can see what features it supports. So this one supports auto HDR, but not FPS boost. So uh, that's a pretty cool way you can kind of test out the different enhancements you get. Here we are in 2006, and we got the, uh, uh, the beginning of really the 360 life cycle, well really the launch games are down here, but here we have the end of the original Xbox as well. So pretty awesome here. And I just love the way this is this just all looks, right? Because you can go down to the original release of the Xbox console. And uh, again, there's so many other games that, that you just don't have backwards compatibility for, but only those can be applied to basically this list up here. So it's just really, really cool. Um, I like the way that this is all organized. And uh, it kind of shows you the generation just in multiple layers here. So we have the start of the Xbox, the, the end of the Xbox and release of the 360, and then that goes all the way up till we have the end of that console and the Xbox One, and then the end of that console and the Series X, <laughs> and then it starts all the way up here until the, uh, to the modern day, which is just awesome. So yeah, you know, if you guys want to replicate um, this yourself, you basically just have to create groups, and I've just called these, you know, by their year. But even if you don't have all the games on this list, I'll show you what you can do. If we go back to the main dashboard here, you can go to the search option here. And you can find a game that you may not have, you know, for the system. Um, let's just do Elden Ring. It's right here. So, but you can search anything up there. Click on Elden Ring. And instead of going show in Microsoft Store, what you're going to want to do is scroll over to go to official club. Go ahead and select that. It's going to open up this page. And then you can select add to home, which is going to add this to a home, to your home screen. And if you scroll down, here it is. You can just push start and then add to a group that way. And so uh, that's how I've kind of got a lot of these other games that I don't necessarily own right now. I haven't purchased them, but I can get them added to a group so I don't have to do that organization later on. And then obviously uh, here, we'll just remove this from home. 
obviously once they're added to a group, you can go down here and just push the select key or the group key or whatever and kind of move them around this way. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've done here for, uh, well, all the games on my uh, Xbox catalog and uh, they're all organized in release date order and also by the year they were released. So yeah, that's a pretty cool look at what I've done the last couple of weeks organizing my digital library on the Xbox consoles at least. Uh, let's check out the PlayStation. So here we are on the PlayStation 5 dashboard. Now, Sony does it a little bit differently where you can't just put in a PS3, PS2, or PS1 disc into your system and then download the game you know, from, from the store and just emulate it on your PS5. You can't do that. Instead, what Sony's done here is uh, they made you they make you subscribe to PlayStation Plus Premium and Extra to basically get some of these uh, features. Now here's the thing, I own some of these games digitally already, I purchased them back on the PS3 and uh, the PlayStation Store back in the day on, on the PSP and stuff like that. So some of these games digitally I already own, but um, you know, I'll, I'll show this uh, to you just right now before we get into the way I kind of organize my library here. But you know, if you go over to collections here, you can kind of take a look at what Sony's kind of offered. And if we go all the way down, we sort of have it organized by PS3, uh, the legacy PlayStation systems, and then your remasters category. And so if we just kind of look at uh, you know PSP, PS1, and PS2, some of these games I already own, like Rallycross. I know I own this, and I can immediately download it to my machine and uh, you know or uh, get it on my dashboard and play it on the PS5 that way. Um, and then I just tested this out right now with Killzone. Here it is, Killzone Liberation, where um, I downloaded this to my system, and yeah, I can immediately start playing this even though I only subscribe to the basic, you know, PlayStation Plus Essential. So it might be worth it for me to kind of, um, you know, take a look after uh, doing this video at what games I kind of own. Like I know I own Ridge Racer Type 4. Yeah, I can do that. I guess I would just have to kind of comb through what's available. I know I have Siphon Filter 3. Oh, game, game. Yep, here we go. So yeah, I just kind of have to take a look through to see uh, which games here uh, I actually own, I guess, on the PlayStation um, Store that I can just download. Um, most of these games I pretty much own on disc anyway, um, but you know, it might be worth it for me to sort of take a look and organize the games that way. There's not too many, as you can see, right? Sony's kind of, you know, just just dropping these in um, little by little. But uh, you know, there might be some more from like the PS3 category that I can kind of take a look at and stuff like that. So let's go back to home. Uh, the point in me actually showing you guys that is that even if you wanted to try to organize this a step further, right? So here's Killzone Liberation. I just downloaded this um, because I own the game, uh, but uh, I downloaded the PS5 version or the remaster, whatever you want to call it. So if I go over to my game library here um, and I go over to my collection, here we go. It's right here. And if I push the options, I can just add it to a game list that way. Now, uh, yeah, I might as well show you what I've done here on the PlayStation uh, console. So on the PS5, you have game lists, which are essentially kind of folders for the system, right? Um, but in a slightly different way. You don't have as much control or, or, or control over sort of the organization of the games being put in these lists as opposed to what you, what you had on the PS4. So um, I've done basically the same thing that I did on the Xbox system, but obviously it's just a little bit different here because I can only go as far back as the PS4 because the system is basically all compatible with um, the PS4 library and, you know, and PS5, of course. Like I said, you can't just put in your PS3 disc or play games that way. I guess what I would have to do to get games that were released prior to the PS4 and uh, also games like uh, maybe on the Vita or the PSP or whatever the case may be is I'd probably have to, again, go through the store, take a look at what games I own, and then organize them to a list that way. So anyway, uh, that being said, uh, pretty much the same rules apply here. You're gonna see a lot of these have a lock on them and that's just because I don't own them digitally. I own this game on uh, disc. So anything that has like a lock um, icon on it, that is why you just need the disc to kind of play it. But uh, pretty much the same rule applies here. So, you know, we have the 2013, which is the release of the PS4. Here's all of my uh, games in release date order. 
And I showed off my PS4 um, collection in a prior video as well. I'm also thinking about doing an updated collection for PS4 and Xbox One since I've, I have gotten a little bit more games on those systems. So maybe sometime in the future I'll just think about doing that. But yeah, you know, it's not quite as beautifully listed as what Microsoft, how Microsoft kind of organizes it with the groups. But it still works basically the same way. Um, and I've kind of, you know, taken the same criteria and everything's in release date order. All the icons that you're seeing here are in the release date order for all these games and uh, done by release year. And so, yeah, it's a bit interesting, right? So you see like the launch of the PS4 and then uh, basically the launch of the PS4 Pro. You know, and then I was getting like all these multi-platforms on the PS4 Pro, and then the Xbox One X came out, and you could see kind of where <laughs> I got most of my multi-plats on the, uh, the Xbox One X, just because, you know, they performed a lot better. So, anyway, and then here we go with the PS5 launch, Spider-Man, Demon Souls, all that good stuff. Here we are with the PS5. 2022... And then 2023. There's a lot more games I still need to put in this group. Um, I, I can tell you right now that I probably have about half a dozen games that are just sealed right now um, in my uh, my shelf just because, you know, I've, I've been busy. I haven't been uh, spending a lot of time playing games lately. So um, even though it kind of has a hard cutoff here on like Fires of Rubicon, I need to put Spider-Man 2 in here. I need to put... Um, you know, like Avatar in here, the Avatar game. Um, there's a couple of other games as well that released Assassin's Creed Mirage and stuff. That would all go in this as I start playing them. So, uh, yeah, unlike Xbox where you can kind of just search up games and then add them to a group that way, you can't really do anything like that on the PlayStation. But, you know, basically um, it's, the same, uh, it's the same concept as far as the organizational structure goes. I like my stuff in release date order just because I like to look at the time Timelines when the games were released, um, how far apart sequels were, the generation and just the different memories and stuff like that held. So like, you know, at the start of the PlayStation 4 launch, playing Killzone Shadowfall, Assassin's Creed 4, Battlefield 4, all these great games, you know. Uh, the Order and stuff, I remember unboxing that and doing some videos for you guys. Man, so I just kind of look, I, I like looking at the, the nostalgia basically in, in that respect. And, uh, you know, Sony kind of organizes all of your games here, um, which uh, should be, yeah, it's probably better to organize these in alphabetical order. So here's like basically all of the games, right? Organized um, alphabetically. And some of these are demos, you know, some of these are, are trials and betas and all this other stuff, but. Yeah, here's, here's a brief look, I guess, of all the games I have <laughs> on PlayStation. But uh, yeah, I just like looking at all the um, the memories and stuff, all that's associated with that, and uh, you know how it looks in in the groups, or I guess the game list is what they're called. <laughs> So yeah, um, that's basically the criteria for me doing that. I guess the next steps for me as far as organization goes is I would need to kind of comb through the games on the PlayStation Plus, um, you know, browse section, see which games I own, and then I'll probably create a list specifically for PSP and uh, PS Vita stuff. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure if PS Vita is supported yet. Sony should definitely do that. If they found a way to get, to get like Uncharted Golden Abyss emulated on the PS5, that would be fantastic because that's a game that should have been included in the Nathan Drake collection and they just didn't do. Um, so yeah, um, we'll see how this service kind of develops over time. Um, I, I like the concept. I do appreciate that Sony does look at your purchase history and they'll give you the games that you own you know, outright for free, or I guess you can just re-download them. That is nice that they do that, um, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's sort of few and far between as far as the releases go, and there needs to be a lot more games, because the catalog for these systems are just, they're, they're massive, they're huge. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's how I kind of organize things on the PS3. Um, you know what? Why don't we take a look at the PS4 as well, because the PlayStation 4 also had folders being used, and uh, I used those um, pretty much in the same, you know, typical way that I kind of organized my stuff here on Series X and PS5. Uh, so let's take a look at that.
All right, everyone, welcome to the PlayStation 4, the PS4 Pro specifically. Now, uh, unlike the previous systems, um, where I basically have, you know, all my games installed to one machine, I kind of have my games split on the PS4 base and then the PS4 Pro. So we're taking a look at the Pro models here, and what I've done is I basically leveraged the folders here to showcase games that were basically compatible and played on the PS4 Pro specifically, okay? So, uh, yeah, and I have all my applications here. The folders here work a little bit differently to how they do on the PS5. Um, they're a little bit more functional here. And uh, I know there's still a lot of people out there who are, who are waiting for Sony to basically update and put folders on the PS5. I'm not even sure if we'll ever see that at any point. But in any case, yeah, here we are on uh, the PS4 Pro. So it's a very similar criteria i have all my games uh that i got for like the pro model you'll see uh some games are not installed here and that's just because i ran out of hard drive space <laughs> um i have here uh, if we go to the settings just really quickly uh, storage i have here a two terabyte uh sshd installed on this thing the the, the um, seagate fire cuda drive uh, i did an unboxing and setup video for you guys and uh, yeah, you know, even with all the games that had released and how big that drive was, it still wasn't enough. Um, so basically what I've done is I've, uh, you know, essentially had to delete some games. So not all the games on my, uh, that I played on my PS4 are installed here, but these are the ones I actually kept on my drive. You know, Mafia 3, some of the launch games for like PS4 Pro specifically and stuff. We go over to 2017 games, got a little bit more, uh, you know, games on during that year for the system, pretty cool. And then 2018, very similar structure. There's only four games in this folder. So yeah, at least on the PS5 there, I was able to actually organize the tiles of games that even though they weren't installed on the system, they are still part of my library. And you can't do that on the PS4 um, specifically. You have to have, it, it only counts for games that are installed specifically to your hard drive. So you kind of have to make do with uh, with what you have here. So anyway, but yeah, I just wanted to quickly show you guys what I have installed here on the PS4 uh, Pro and in all my applications. It's funny because as the system went on to receive updates, new applications were added and stuff, and I basically had to keep putting these in folders. So I don't use any of this stuff, you know, um, maybe besides the capture gallery. I remember using that. I don't have Spotify. I don't use remote play to my PS5 at all. None of this stuff I, I used at all during the system's life cycle. So I just keep these in a folder and uh, yeah, I don't even bother with them. So yeah, if we go to like my library, for instance, it's gonna show all the games that uh, are installed here. And then if we keep scrolling down, um, or it's actually in, hold on. No, it's in purchased and PlayStation Plus. Okay. <laughs> it's a little bit different here. Yeah. So here's some games that like I have, like I, I know I, ha I have this on my base PS4, but there's no way for me to actually put that into a folder at all. You know, um, I can only select it and it needs to be installed specifically to the hard drive. It needs to be within this list here of games installed in your hard drive in order for you to basically add these to a specific folder. Yeah, move from folder, edit folder, etc. So yeah, you kind of have to make do uh, with that. Um, but as you can see, it's basically the same criteria. And uh, with that said, let's move on to the, uh, the base PS4, the original launch model. And here we are on the original PlayStation 4, my launch model. So yeah, um, I guess we'll just run through this quickly because it's a very similar structure to uh, the other systems. Um, yeah, obviously uh, uh, here I have all my applications in the same folder, you guys seen that. And then it kind of goes from 2016, 2015, 2014, then to 2013. Obviously I don't have all those games installed because again, just like the PS4 Pro, I ran out of hard drive space ra uh, relatively quickly. And uh, I put another two terabyte hard drive in here. This one was just a standard hard drive. It wasn't an SSHD like the Fire Cuda one I put, but um, you can see it should be uh, just about full. God, this base model takes a little while to load. <laughs> 
so yeah, you know, basically the same, the same things there. I uh, got all those games installed and basically I had to delete some to, um, you know, accommodate here. But it's the same, you know, basic structure, the launch games, uh, some of the games um, 20, uh, from 2014. Yes, I do have PT installed on this machine. I actually created a backup for this game um, and I copied that backup to my computer. So if anything happens to my PS4, like it breaks down, I already have a backup of the software with the game on and uh, it works perfectly fine. So that's great. Um, and then we got the 2015 games here. All these games, it's pretty awesome. Again, I just like seeing sort of the, you know, the flow of the, of the generation over time and stuff. And then 2016. So yeah, pretty cool, all the apps there. And uh, yeah, you know, that's kind of just how I organized all my, all my game list on these consoles. Um, you know, let's, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see an updated physical game collection uh, vlog for me. Uh, again, I got a lot more pickups for the previous generation of systems that I didn't show previously. So let me know if that's of interest to you guys. And other than that, uh, let me know what you think of the video, and we'll talk later. Have a good one.